Thank you, Ben. Well, I don't know if you've stood at the dairy cabinet fridge recently at the supermarket, but it seems like you need a science degree when it comes to deciding on which milk is best for your family. Danny Minogue has recently been spruiking a designer milk called A2, which she claims has cured her sensitivity to dairy products. For more, we're joined now by today nutritionist Joanna McMillan. Good morning to you, Joanna. You don't need a science degree. You've got me. That's well, what I'm here for to exactly. explain this. So what is the difference between this A2 and mm. normal milk? Well, the thing, I'm, I'm going to lose the word designer milk for a start because actually this is the original milk. So several thousand years ago, there was a natural mutation in European dairy cows that meant that they went from being, usually producing this A2 beta casein, which is one of the major proteins in the milk. A2 so beta casein. So it's 18 beta casein. So you'll have heard of casein and whey. They're the two major proteins that are in milk. Casein's the major one. It's 80% of the proteins in milk. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those caseins. It's called beta casein. And there's two different forms. Now, cows used to only produce produce this A2 and somehow there was a natural mutation that happened that meant that the cow started to produce A1. So this is actually the original milk. It's not being designed. It's not down to any kind of genetic modification or, you know, the cows being fed different things. It's down to the genetics of the cow. Right. So they're coming from specific cows. Yeah. So A2 what, cows. to produce A2, they've got to test the genes of the cow and then they separate them into those that have the genes for A2 and they separate out the ones that are producing A1. So most of the milk that we buy here in Australia is a mixture of A1 and A2 beta casein. Now the research is looking at that A1 beta casein. Now when we break down, proteins are great big long chains, so just imagine an enormous long chain. We break that down into smaller chains and these are called peptides. And the difference between those two beta caseins means that there's different peptides, one in particular, that's produced. And it's that little peptide that could potentially be problematic in some people, and well, this doesn't have it. Well, Danny says that she used to be intolerant to dairy products, but she doesn't have a problem with this. So does mm. this, this mean that people who are lactose intolerant would be fine with this? Well, this is where it gets a little bit hazy. This still has lactose, because lactose is the carbohydrate in the milk. But the problem that we have is that lots of people who think that they have lactose intolerance have never actually been clinically tested. So it may well be that in fact they have an intolerance to something else in the milk. Right. So we have a whole load of different things in milk and in every other food that could cause effects in your body. So my suggestion is if that you have clinically proven lactose intolerance, then no, this milk will not be suitable okay. for you. You need to buy something that is a lactose-free milk, mm -hmm. which are like also on the market. Like, well, you could go for soy, but you can still have dairy milk, but something like Zymel or Paul's do a, a lactose-free milk, right. okay? But if you have, as Danny has, more, you know, undiagnosed problems with milk where you don't really quite know what the problem is, but you just know it doesn't really sit well with you, it doesn't yep. feel well with you. Or if you have young children, then this might be a milk to try because there's certainly some evidence that the peptides involved might have effects in the gut. And if they get across your gut up into the blood, then there might be effects throughout the body. Okay, but it's, it's an early stage of scientific research. We need an awful lot more. But my suggestion is, look, if you think you're having problems with milk, but you tolerate this stuff fine, then this is a great way to be able to include you milk in your diet. You know your stuff, Joanna McMillan. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Georgie, over to you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Well, manners are always a hot button issue, with many believing that they've gone astray. Not here on the Today Show. But as today's Mike Dalton reports, there's one place practicing manners from the 19th century, a genteel era.